Hey everyone, so today let's talk about vocal fold immobility disorder. It's also known as vocal fold palsy or sometimes it's just paralysis. Have you seen some patients coming up to you and be like, Hi, my, my aim is actually, I'm not able to talk properly twice. So this kind of strain and breathiness in voice can be an indication of vocal fold palsy or paralysis. Now, what exactly is vocal fold palsy or paresis? Palsy, the word means complete movement is restricted. Whereas paresis means a partial movement is restricted. Now, vocal fold palsy can be either unilateral or even bilateral. So, the most common signs we see in a patient with vocal fold palsy or paresis is dysphonia, uh, breathiness in voice, plus there's a partial loss of voice, Along with that, the patient might complain of, I'm not able to complete a long sentence. I'm feeling pain on my throat after talking for a long time. I'm feeling like uh, there's a choking or coughing sensation or <clears throat> the throat clearing sensation every time I take up some liquids or chai or juice. So these are the most common signs and symptoms with which the patient comes up. See, sometimes you can see the patients coming after a surgery which is done somewhere else in the body but the patient has got vocal fold palsy. What might be the reason? It can be due to the intubation trauma. During the intubation, there might be a physiological trauma onto either sides of the vocal fold. Sometimes it can also be due to adrenoid fixation or the adrenoid dislocation. Next, it can be due to a damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is mostly seen in cases of post-thyroidectomy where either one side or maybe both sides of the recurrent laryngeal nerve are damaged. There is a trauma onto it. Therefore, the person is having vocal fold palsy or paresis might be unilateral if only one recurrent laryngeal nerve is affected if both are affected it can be bilateral vocal fold palsy or paresis well sometimes you can see it even at the brainstem level there is a dysfunction in the brainstem nuclei and in coordination in the working of vocal fold movement the vocal fold palsy can be caused due to many other reasons these are just the few reasons Sometimes it's just some disease like neurofibromatosis 2 can also cause vocal fold palsy and there are many other. Now as an SLP, how you can diagnose vocal fold palsy without any instruments? A simple technique, you just have to ask the patient to phonate. At the same time, you can place your fingers on the thyroid lamina and gently press on either sides and see if the voice can improve. If the patient is phonating ah uh, and the voice improves here, that means the patient might have vocal fold palsy on that side. Now, the instrumental evaluation which can be done to diagnose vocal fold palsy are laryngoscopy and video stroboscopy. Here, what you have to mainly observe on the scopy view is the movement of vocal fold. Whether both the vocal fold are adducting when you ask the patient to say E. If one vocal fold is not moving, you have to check what position it stays at when the patient is trying to phonate. If it's at the lateral position or paramedian position or median position. The next thing you have to check is if the good vocal fold which is moving properly is able to compensate till the gap of the palsy vocal fold. That means there is no phonatory gap and the moving vocal fold is able to compensate the movements of the immobile vocal fold then there are lesser risk of aspiration or penetration of liquids and lesser chances of him or her having any sort of voice changes. Now another thing you can also check is if the arytenoid of the mobile vocal fold is going on top of the arytenoid of immobile vocal fold. That means there is arytenoid overriding and this can result in severe vocal strain. So in patients with vocal fold palsy, you should always do a swallowing assessment because there are chances of aspiration, especially in liquid consistencies. So you can just directly refer for a FEES test. FEES is flexible endoscopic evaluation of swallowing along with sensation testing will give you a better idea of how the patient's swallowing status is. Now, once a patient is diagnosed with vocal fold palsy, voice therapy must be initiated as soon as the patient is able to follow our commands. 
proper techniques must be provided according to what kind of vocal pole palsy they have along with what is the reason of vocal pole palsy one is to improve their breath control second is to strengthen their vocal fold third is to reduce their vocal strain so these three might be the most common goals that we see in voice therapy so the first is to improve the breath control you have to ask the patient to breathe really well in the right posture and position with the tummy out when you breathe in and tummy in when you breathe out so this is known as the abdominal breathing pattern and along with that you can also provide the patient with lax walks that is cup and straw phonation and also you can give them a spirometer next is to improve their voice and strengthen their vocal fold here you can ask the patient to hold their breath as much as possible so as to close the vocal fold another thing you can do is digital manipulation here you can physiologically and manually move the vocal fold to the adducted position when they are phonating push and pull exercise where you are exerting pressure onto the vocal fold and manually trying to close them another one is turning your head to one position and also you can even give the patient a dumbbell to lift that can help in the approximation of vocal folds to reduce vocal strain you have to explain the patient the vocal hygiene program the importance of hydration the importance of not doing throat clearing whispering shouting and dietary modification which can prevent the patient from having reflux all these together makes up the voice therapy now voice therapy can be continued for around 6 to even 12 months after a point of time if they don't see any recovery they must be planned for a surgical moment so the most common surgical intervention which we see for vocal fold palsy is injection laryngoplasty with a certain substance and this will be injected onto the palsy vocal fold and this can improve glottic closure and along with this you can also continue voice therapy to improve the strength of vocal fold now sometimes all these might not work and we might have to go for a permanent solution here we can go for medialization laryngoplasty and even laryngeal innervation surgeries now that's all about vocal fold palsy and how voice therapy can improve glottic closure so i hope you all liked it